festival is an occasion for us to celebrate. Right? So you celebrate with joy or you celebrate with sadness. It's definitely joy. You know? Then you tend to receive a lot of New Year wishes. You know? People wishing you a happy and prosperous New Year. Mm. Then some, as they get older, age, they will wish you good health. <laughs> good health and good life. Uh. Then, if you can understand, you will understand that all these wishes, they may have good intention, yeah? but through just wishing, can it be fulfilled? Uh, you have to ask yourself that question. Uh, if through wishing, you can really make things happen, then no need to cultivate, no need to be a good person. Then every day wish each other. Huh? I wish you long life, good health, yeah? happy, prosperous, and good Chinese New Year. <laughs> uh, then some, they wish for their career, yeah? success, their whatever career promotion, then their growth in life. Uh, so many of these, as traditional Chinese, if we don't understand, we just develop the traditional way of doing things. So we wish each other well-being and happiness, happy and prosperous Chinese New Year and all the goodies. <laughs> but at the same time, it's our culture and tradition to make gifts or offering to family members, good friends, good neighbors, and some like colleagues eh? or your client and all those things. So this is actually a good practice because it develops generosity, which is a marital section. So being generous, being kind, wishing for the goodness and happiness of others. So all these are good virtue. Yeah. But to understand life, we have to go a step deeper. We have to move on to cultivate the Dhamma understanding. So a lot of this thing is not only through wishing then it can be fulfilled. If it's so simple, then no need to cultivate, no need to go do all the good things, uh, the good things that the Buddha teaches. The Buddha Dharma is about nature's law, understanding the nature's law that governs life and existence. So when we understand this nature's law that governs life and existence, then we come to realize a very important understanding for us to have good life, yeah? meaningful life, peaceful life, happy life. Yeah? We must have virtue. We must have wisdom. We must follow the advice of the Buddha yeah? to avoid all evil, cultivate goodness, wholesomeness, then meditate to purify your mind. Or constantly listen to the Dhamma to straighten you, your views, to develop more and more Dhamma understanding so that your initial wisdom will arise. There will be right view with regards to this spiritual law or nature's law that governs life and existence, especially the law of karma. Then followed by the law of mind, how you function as a human being, how our Monday mind or thinking mind, how they arise and how they pass away, and the law that they follow. Uh, the Buddha called it the twirling of Paticca Samuppada. So when you understand this teaching, the twirling or the Paticca Samuppada, the law of dependent origination, you will develop great wisdom. Then you can understand life. And when you understand life, you can live life to the fullest. Then you can experience the beauty and wonders of life. Then life becomes meaningful. 
beautiful. Yeah. That's how it can transform living beings. So when you understand this teaching, it brings about a lot of benefits, a lot of wholesomeness. It can transform your life hmm. from a heedless, deluded way into a heedful way with wisdom and virtue developed so that you will grow in prosperity. You will grow in joy, happiness, tranquility, stillness and happiness. Your life will transform for the better. So this is something that you must understand as a Buddhist so that it will really help you. Being a Buddhist is not just the Buddhist label, I'm a Buddhist. <laughs> that doesn't really have much meaning. So Chinese New Year, in a way, is a good tradition. I see positive meaning in it. That's why this topic of Chinese New Year is a very good topic. I remember I delivered a few talks in SJBA uh, on Chinese New Year. <laughs> One of them was the greetings uh, and the wishing and all those things. <coughs> that talk was very good. I think it's in our website. It talks about all these uh, good wishes, Chinese New Year greeting. Hmm. Just like what I have explained just now. By mere wishing, it can never come true. It may be some uh, kind words, uh, uh, meaningful greeting. And when you read it, you feel happy. And so on. Uh, but then, for it to materialize, is more important. Isn't it? <laughs> so when people wish you uh, a happy and prosperous New Year, what do you think? You feel good or not? Yeah? Most people feel good. You, know? you want to be happy, you want to be prosperous. But later on, I realized some of the classmates say, hey, money we have already, you know. Help, more important. <laughs> you say, wish me good health. <laughs> uh, long life. Then somebody add, hey, long life miserable, you know. <laughs> long life but not healthy. <laughs> So you must have good health first. Uh, you may have a lot of money. Then you may struggle to live long life. But are you happy? That's why now they talk about quality of life. Uh, so if you want to have good life, quality life, you must have Dhamma. Dhamma is not just about cultivation, go retreat, uh, strive for enlightenment and all those things. No. Dhamma is the totality of understanding of life. Do you understand? Eh? What are the totality of understanding of life? Means you must understand who are you, what are you, this form and mind. When you understand, then you know this form and mind is impermanent lead to suffering when you deludely attach and cling. Then because it's impermanent, it's not a permanent unchanging entity that you can cling on to, hold on to and say, this is me, this is I. Therefore, this one is non-self, empty nature, no reality. But then this one is useful. Where this is the karmically condition for my mind, for us to come to this existential world to live life, to experience life, to do the things that we want to do in life, to go through the karmic process, to experience all the beauty and wonders of life, to cultivate and do whatever you can do with it. So this aspect you have to understand, there is such thing as life. So you have to maintain a healthy body. Do you understand? Yeah? Healthy body, not only for you to have the good life, the quality life, but also to enable you to cultivate. Do you understand? If you don't have a healthy body, not easy to cultivate. There's a lot of people who approach 70, 80, and 90, 
then they always complain. The body cannot support their practice anymore, their cultivation anymore. So they always complain that, ah, yo, I should have learned the Dhamma earlier, when I'm young, uh, when I am healthy, when I can go through the cultivation. Now, I am having to confront the reality of aging, disease, sickness, and finally, pending death. So this reality, when they manifest, if you don't take care of your body, you will suffer. So that's why life is about total understanding. So the Dhamma encompasses total understanding. Dhamma is to realize the truth. The essential Dhamma of the Buddha is all the truth within nature's law, the spiritual law of nature. So when you understand truth, you understand Dhamma. When you understand Dhamma, you understand life. You know how to live life. Then you know how to do your duty. Then you know how to take care of things. So you will understand not through wishing that these good things can be fulfilled. It's through understanding the nature's law that work towards them. That's why cultivating Dhamma is very important. Following the advice of the Buddha is cultivating Dhamma the proper way. That can lead to virtue, wisdom, enlightenment. And when you have this, you will become beautiful, especially awakening, enlightenment, wisdom. When you have wisdom, only then your virtue can become true virtue. Without wisdom, virtue most of the time is virtue according to you, <laughs> good according to the individual. But when you have the Dhamma, when you have realized the understanding of the Dhamma, means you have wisdom. When you have wisdom, you will know how to manifest the appropriate virtue. The embodiment of Noble Eightfold Path will be there. You will have right view, leading to right understanding of life, the nature's law, especially the spiritual law that governs life and existence. Then you can constantly arise the right thought, right speech, and right action, and right livelihood to live life, to communicate beautifully. Yeah. Then you become like very noble in all aspects of life. You are very noble in your understanding of life. You are very noble in the way you communicate and develop relationship with people. Yeah. So all these are very important understanding that leads to beautiful virtue. Mm. So virtue is a very beautiful quality for our mind. When we are virtuous, we have a lot of merits, a lot of wholesomeness. Because virtue is free of evil roots, without greed, without hatred, and without delusion. So this occasion, uh, Chinese New Year, to me is very meaningful. Mm. And not only that, the other aspect of Chinese New Year is what? Uh, the Eve. What do you do? Ah, reunion dinner, Tuan Nian Fan. You get to come together as a family, a big family, yeah? to have this reunion dinner, which is very meaningful, very beautiful. Then you can catch up with each other, understand not? Then you know how to apply Noble Eightfold Path. You can develop the cultivation too. Then develop the understanding to help family members. So, it's an occasion where you have good reunion, update yourself, and help out whoever need help. Then share information, understand or not? 
so that we learn from each other. Uh, of course, learn the good thing. Huh? Uh, don't learn the wrong thing. Then it's not an occasion to gossip and badmouth other people's life. Do you understand? That is not the way for power. Uh, that is wrong speech. Uh, that's why during Chinese New Year reunion or whatever, you can apply Dhamma. Check your cultivation. Whether noble evil power is with you or not. Or you are still heedless. Uh, getting carried away. Overeating. Overindulging. And all those things. So when you have good understanding of the Dhamma, you will know how to conduct yourself appropriately. The embodiment of the noble evil power factor is very useful, very beautiful. And when you have them, your Dhamma understanding is established. You can be rest assured that you have the Dhamma. Otherwise, the embodiment of the Noble Eightfold Power Factor will not be with you. You will not be heedful, mindful, aware. Your mind state will not be the refined type. Yeah. A cultivator, a true cultivator, or a Dhamma practitioner that has really developed the correct understanding, the right Dhamma understanding. Their minds are different. They are heedful, ever mindful. Most of the time, they are peaceful, calm, tranquil. Their mind state are still. <laughs> and they are fully aware, constantly meditative, ever mindful. They have good understanding. They can accept the reality of the moment. They can be at peace in any situation in life, any time, any place, anywhere. And they will always have joy, goodness, wholesomeness. And they are a blessing to all. Everywhere they go, they are a blessing to all all of humanity, society, yeah, even the environment, mm. because they manifest positive mind states, good vibration, energy, wisdom. Then devas will like you. <laughs> Non-human too will be attracted to you and like you. Then they can feel your love, your metta, your compassion, then they can see you are different. Mm. And Dhamma protector will protect you. Yeah. They will rejoice in whatever you share. Then when you transfer marriage, share marriage, the non-human, they receive them. Yeah. Especially those non-humans that need your merits. Uh, and they can receive them. Uh, actually, to receive merit is very easy. You just have to rejoice. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. sadhu. Then, the wholesome mind state is a meritorious section, rejoicing. Mm. The four Brahma Vihara mind states are important mind states, especially uh, metta. Huh? When you have metta, your mind states are very beautiful. Then, when you have compassion, your mind states are also very beautiful. A very compassionate person is usually also a very kind and understanding person. That's how compassion manifests. Then when you can rejoice, means you have goodness. You don't have negativity or mind state like envy, <laughs> jealousy, unhappy mind state, uh, sadness, sorrow, lamentation. All this will be gone. When you can rejoice in the wholesomeness that arise, and when you can have the good mind states yeah, to appreciate life, even contentment or this virtue can make you beautiful. Yeah. When you are contented, your mind states are very beautiful. <laughs> there is no envy, jealousy, yeah. so sorrow, lamentation, sadness, all these problems don't exist. Yes, you are contented with life. You appreciate life. Good evening. 
cooperative, the, um, um, while we have uh, the means uh, to do shopping during Chinese New Year and also uh, buying other material things, is it, is, isn't it better if we do some renunciation and uh, <laughs> stop ourselves when we see wow, nice objects <laughs> that compulsive buying? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I, I understand your question, eh? Sadhu to you, Angie. You see, don't worry about all these things. This thing will naturally unfold. When you cultivate, the question is self-answered. Because as you cultivate, you change, you transform. And your awareness see. See all those sense, they call it the sense door activity like the moment of seeing consciousness. Then how did the seeing consciousness last night condition you without you being aware at all? And it become your habitual tendency. Then every time Chinese New Year, you are so conditioned. Hey, bang, shopping. Uh, uh, then bang, driver. <laughs> uh, then wait for you. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, this is quite natural of most couples. So you will start to be aware. Yeah. But just now, what prompted your question was the thought. So don't worry, you will go through this phase because your thought wants to understand how to cultivate, how to develop this understanding. So this one is at the moment knowledge based, the thought telling you, that's why the question comes. But what I'm trying to share with you is don't try to know, cultivate. Most important is to cultivate until the sati come, until all this understanding surface. Then you become different naturally. Like I told you last time, I like to play mahjong. All of a sudden, it got no more meaning. I still can play. I'm still very good. I don't need to look at the card. I ulut only. I know what card it is. Huh. Then sometimes I don't need to ulut. I use the other one finger in the middle. I know what card. Flower also, I know what number. Oh. Yet fa, yi fa, sam fa, se fa. I just touch and I know the flower. And all this is not to say I don't know how to play. I'm still very good at it. I'm still an expert in it. But suddenly, no meaning. No. I just stop. My classmate, oh, surprise. You ask my wife. Suddenly, stop. There's no more meaning already. I can't do all those things already. But if you want me to play, I can still play. I'm still very good at it. Last night, card also same. I, I like game of card also. Uh, so all these things, you will evolve and you will transform and you become different. There are a lot of things that my mind used to do, like that day, uh, the reporting by Alicia. Was it a Tuesday class? Uh? Yeah? Tell me, Tuesday class, huh? And you remember? He said he saw something on the plant. Eh? Remember? No? The heavy children is straight away eh? want to say something negative about who who is the guy eh? who throw this thing. Could be the neighbor or somebody who passed by. They want to tell the husband, Freddy. Eh? Freddy. Then he realized what was going on. Though. Then she was aware. Eh? Then he realized, hey, what am I doing? This one is of no beneficial value. Eh? They said, this is nothing to do with Noble A4 Park. This is the old habitual way of gossiping and all those things. And allowing the thought to proliferate. So he straight away stop. That is what mindfulness is all about. That is what awareness is all about. Then she replied, is it beneficial to say all this? To allow this thought to continue and to call Freddy, the husband, and complain and or joke about it and say bad things about people who do it. And so because the understanding is there. They are just the way they are. Heedless, selfish, they will do selfish things. When you accept them for what they are, you are at peace. And when you are at peace, your sankara doesn't move like last time. That's how you become more and more quiet, more and more quiet, less and less reactive. That's how you only so manasikara eh, transform you. It will straight away from you. Wise attention at the moment of sense experience. Straight away this will come out. Then you will know. 
Sankara Anichang, Sankara Dukang, Dhamma Anatta. People are just the way they are. Finish. The world is the world. Condition like that, things will be like that. Then understanding will free your mind. Then later on, as this stabilizes, no need the word also. It straight away laugh, smile. Yeah, the understanding is already there. You cannot react anymore. You cannot do anything. But sometimes life is like that. If it is something for the good of the many, why not? Like my wife want to buy anything, I say go ahead. Uh, but certain thing there is no benefit, value, or not much use, then I will maybe tell her in a very nice way, uh, this one no need to buy. Yeah. And she understands. Then sometimes she has a reason. She will tell me. Then I say, okay, okay, bye. This thing I leave it to you. You are this, huh? Because sometimes people bring New Year offering. So she has to actually offer back. And as well, you call it. Top fun, So he said, has to like exchange. Uh. Uh, so we buy some, then we receive, then we substitute, then another one come, receive, substitute, or some we want to give, we just pack them and give so that we have them. And if we can have the means, why not? This will give people joy and you know, happiness. Then it is wholesome. You may think it's exchange, no, but both are performing generosity. Both are developing merits, understand? No? And there is joy in their heart. Where they can offer to us, they also feel good. Yeah. They will have gratitude. Okay? So this is for your special, huh? Before New Year. <laughs>